Hey my friend, this is Dirk. In this video, let's talk about how we can create the strategy header effect in iOS. Now this is the effect that you see all around the app store, all around the apps that you are using every single day. Look at Instagram, look at Facebook, look at Apple Music, look at Spotify. They use this effect so that the, the header of your table view or the header of your collection view, usually you have that in the detail screen, right? It has a header, the image. And when you score and you stretch it, the image doesn't just like stay there. The image, it seems like it's stretched around. It's, it's increased the size a little bit, just like a, um, a spring, I guess, right? It's created a very fun, very nice and interactive effect. Looks your apps way more professional, way more more cool to use. So in this video, let's create this app. We have a table view of just like an image. Uh, we have a collection view of different thumbnails of different images. When we click onto one, we show the details screen. In this details screen, we have an image, a big, big image, the detail image, and then below there is just like some comments, right? And when we scroll down the image, the image will stretch. That's why we call the stretchy header effect. In this video, I use a table view, so we can very easily even populate this. But pay attention that a lot of people, I. I I know that you guys will ask is that, can I use this in the collection view? The answer is yes, because if you look at the implementation of this in just a moment inside our demo, you'll see that we use a UI scroll view delegate method. Right, UI scroll view delegate method. The same can be used for UI collection view because UI collection view controller and UI tail view controller is own subclass of UI scroll view, right? So I hope that you enjoy this. Let's download the start project right down below on this page. Download it. Then you enter your name and email so, it's, so I can send you the start project, some images, some model classes, some already view controllers that I already created for you and some of the other cool stuff. And also I have a new video series coming up for you all about creating the world's most popular and beautiful user interface for apps like Instagram, for apps like an e-commerce app, a retail app, Nike, apps like Twitter with Firebase. And I hope that you will join me there. Enter your name and email there so I can send you that project and also that video series over the next few days. Until then, let's go into demo. Let's download the start project. Let's get into the demo. Let's build this strategy header effect. All right, my friend, open up your start project and let's get to work. This is the complete project when we run on the simulator again. We have a collection view of a grid of photos or images. And when we tap onto one, we want to show the full size of the image. And the nice thing about this is that below there we have some details, some uh, comments, but when we scroll up to see the image, when we stretch it down, it zooms out very nicely like that. It seems like stretches, right? You see that in Spotify, in all, all those cool apps. And when we scroll up, pay attention, when we scroll up, it zooms in a, just a little bit so that we see some intuitive, some interaction with the app. How can we do that? Let's talk all about in this demo. So inside our main storyboard, again, if you haven't downloaded the starter project I prepared for you, just download that and you will see three photos, like or two photos. There's a starter project and there's a complete project that we're working on so that if you miss a step, you can compare the code, okay? So inside here, let's go into the storyboard and we will design this detail screen. Notice the detail screen. We have navigation bar, because we are going to pop, push that on the navigation stack over here. And then we have a header view, right? An image. And then below that is a tail view, simple tail view for some comments, some detail if you want to do that in your app. So let's drag out a tail view controller. We drag this out to here like this, right? And then now let's make a segue, custom segue from here to there so that we can trigger that segue whenever we want. On co with code, right? Now, how can we have this header? How can we have this header? Well, m some may say that, why don't we just put this image, the full size image, on one particular prototype cell because we have different, we can have different prototype cell for the tail view, right? Now that can, that may be done, but that is harder. Now, one, the trick here, the trick here is that we are going to use the header view of the tail view. 
and when we use the header view of the tail view, then our app, the feature here can be generic, right? So it means that you can use the same feature for collection view, you can use the same feature for tail view, right? So here, I will search for a UI view, the UI view here, I will drag it up to the header of the tail view, and then let's release that. And then let's drag this thing down below a little bit, just like this. Now you have to be very, very careful here because when we say about header view of the tail view, some may assume that that is the section header of the tail view because the tail view or the collection view has different sections. Know that, right? So the collection view here over here will have a section and inside that section will have different sections and each section will have the uh, header of the section, right? We have the header of the section. But now here, we don't use different sections. We don't use the header of the section, but rather we use the header of the table view itself. So we have the header for the table view. That is different from our uh, section header. So very careful with the terms over there, right? So then I will drag out a UI image view, and then let's drag this thing to the UI view. And then I will auto lay out for this guy, zero all across the edges, and then add the constraint, update the frames, add the four constraints. Very simple, very simple UI, right? Now let's change this image so that you can see the problem. <laughs> so this image, let's change that into some default image over here, F3, oh, I don't like that one. So F, um, let's use two, F1, okay. <laughs> okay, now you see that the image here is distorted. Right, because we are using the content mode to be scaled to fill. Let's use aspect fill so it looks nice on the tab. And also, you see that for Xcode, the new Xcode, it shows the bounds of, of the image. It's over the bounds, right? The reason is we didn't clip to bounds. So click clip to bounds so that the image doesn't go over the bound of the image view. Now, the reason why we have to use aspect fill is that this image over here, the image over here, it is going to be stretched. We are going to change the frame of the image. We're going to change the height of the image. And if we don't use aspect fill, if we use like aspect fit or scale to fit, scale to fill, the image will look ridiculous. So you have to use aspect field here. Okay, so it looks nice. And then the last thing, let's drag this um, thing down a little bit. And then we have something like a label right let's have a label over here like this so that we have the name of the author let's make this thing uh, bold okay and then let's say Emily for the name of the ones who comment something like this okay it may change a little bit because I don't remember exactly what is the detail but it's simple stuff so let's change the color into this purple color we have the code for that is 744F81, like this, right? And then let's drag out another label for that guy. And it's just four point, okay, it's four point to the top. One, two, three, four, like this. And then some comment goes here, like that. We don't have to use multiple lines here because we are going to do that in code. So let's make sure that this is 18. So I want to do that below there is just uh, say eight. Okay, so let's reduce the size of the cell, eight point. It will be, what is that math here? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Over here, right? I hope that you catch what I'm doing here. It seems like I missed the math, so. Okay, eight points. So let's do auto layout for this guy. Now, why don't I just let you do that, right? Let's you do the auto layout here, and then we'll go to code. So pause this section a little bit, pause this video a little bit, do auto layout for this cell, and then we'll come back and we will code this app from scratch. Okay. Hope that you did auto layout for this guy. So here is the way that I do it. If you miss anything, so I will use zero to the, I'm sorry, constraint for the this Emily, add the constraint, 
and this thing too let's add the constraint to the top with the emily and all the bottoms because we are going to auto resize the tail view height that's why it's very important that we have all the verticals constraints for this tail view right if you after this after this if you see that your tail view style is distorted somehow then that is the problem with auto layout then just download the complete pro, uh, complete project and then um compare those constraints with over here right see that now one very important thing last thing is we might we must make this cell i'm sorry we must make this comment label the lines to be zero so we can have multiple lines for the comment just like that right okay now let's create a view a custom class for the view of this head of it so i will over the view here and we will create a new file it is a swift file it's or you can use coco touch class that's okay and then let's use detail header view don't use head of view because we already have a head of view here my mistake it should be like um category head of view or something but here let's use detail head of view and let's import ui kit over there i hope that do you see the font clearly let's increase the font to 28 like this much better right okay so we import ui kit let's have um okay so let's have a class for the detail header view which is a subclass of ui view like this and this is head detail header view we just have a ib outlet var for our image view so just simple like that you can add again you can add any detail into this thing you can add labels buttons you can add any kind of thing you can even do animation with this thing i don't care you can do anything that is the magic of having a custom view right so now what is the public api for this guy so we have an image because we want to display the full image so this is a ui image optional like that and when we get this set for this image right when this image gets set by maybe the controller then we are going to check if we do have the image because we're using optional here because maybe someone forgot to display this thing or maybe the download of this image isn't complete yet then we don't want to display some weird image so else here then we just do image view dot image to be nil but if we do have the image then let's just do image view dot image to be our image right, pretty simple stuff okay the next thing let's create our comment view tail view cell so this time i will use coco touch class ui tail view cell like this right and let's call this thing comment tail view cell for the comment over here right, let me show you the complete project for the comment cell over here so let's delete all this thing because we are going to use storyboard and then let's have a ib outlet wick var for the username label UI label. We will connect these IB outlets later. IB outlets, wick var. Oops, this is wick. For our comment text label. And it is UI label like this. Right? All right. Now, where is the public API for this guy? If you notice that we have a comments.square file. Right? In this thing, we just have some dummy files, some dummy comments for the structure over here. So we, you don't have to worry about that. It's just for the demo. So let's have a var comment is of typed comments like this. And again, when this guy did select, then we check if we do have the comment. And if we do have the comment, then let's use the username label dot text to be comment dot user dot to string like this so that we have the username and then we have the username label dot text color we can change the text color of this guy so it looks nice to be comment dot user dot to color like that okay so we have the color and the last thing is comment text label dot text to be uh, comment text label right to be the comment dot text follow 
All right. If we do not have the comment, then let's use username label dot text to be nil, and the comment label, comment text label dot text also to be nil. And I yeah right, it's to be nil. So it will override those dummy text that we put inside our table view cell. Okay, pretty nice thing, right? So let's go back to our main dot storyboard and um connect this cell over here the head of view this view to be the class is let me zoom in the class here is detail head of view and then after that we can connect our IB outlet so we just have one image view over here you see this we drag it to the image view very simple stuff and then this cell the cell we just very we just created let's change this cell select the cell don't select the label select the cell the cell here is our what is that what did, what do you call it comment tail view cell like that and then we connect the outlet so we have um comment text label over here comment text label we have the username label username label boom done right okay now next thing let's create a controller for this detail view this detail view controller let's over the controller group create a new file this thing called touch class UI tail view controller. Right, you can use a UI tail view controller, detail tail view controller, put it there like that. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let me, you know what? Let me delete all of these code. We don't need these code. And let's delete these things inside our view did load too, like that. Okay. So what do we need for this class? What do we need for this class? The detail tail view controller. Well, we very much we need the image, right? We need the image. So var image is a UI image. We need the comment. So let's get the comment to be. Let's get all the dummy comments using this class I have over here. Comments dot all comments just dummy class in other in your project maybe you want to download all the comments for this post maybe you want to download all the details for this movie any kind of app that you are doing or i see a re a lot of recipes app using the same um, ui you can download all the details for that recipe just like that right pretty cool so now in order to get this image in order to get the image and the this image then we have to transition, we have to segue from our details, uh, from what the collection view over here, right? For the collection view. So let's go back into our collection view. This collection view, uh, photos collection view controller. And then when you drag down, there will be a collection view, oops, not this thing, a mark here, oops, a mark for the collection view delegate. Or you can go over here, there will be a line and you'll see UI collection view delegate. If you're familiar with collection view or you're familiar with tail view, there's a method called collection view that select item at index path. Or for the tail view is tail view that select row at index path. Right? So here I already put in a comment over here and we said whenever this row, this item gets selected, then we will get the category, we'll get the image. Right, and then we get the index path, and then we'll perform the segue with an identifier called show detail segue. Now here, I want you to uncomment this thing by holding the command and backslash key, so we have the show detail segue. Now, what? Why is that show detail segue? Then this is inside our struct storyboard of here. It's a good practice that you put all of that string identifiers inside one struct rather than just put in just like hard code or just typing in the string whenever you want to use very cool um i guess convention or practice so here inside this struct we have the show details segue let's comment this i'm sorry let's copy this show details segue go back into your main storyboard select this segue and then we add the identifier for this segue to be show detail like that right pretty cool so now let's go back into the photos collection view controller Whenever we show the detail, whenever we segue to that, then very much likely we need to prepare for that segue in order to get that image. So let's have a mark for, let me check if we do have a mark over here. 
No, we don't have the subway yet, so navigation for our navigation like this. And let's override the prepare for oops, prepare for segway. And here, let's check if the segway.identifier is indeed our storyboard dot show details segway. Remember that uh, storyboard thing? Yeah? Okay. If we do got that, then let's let's get the detail TVC, detail tape view controller to be the segway.destination as a detail tail view controller. Got that? Okay. After that, let's get the image. So we can get the image using the selected index path when we select on the item. So let's got that. So we got the selected index path. Let's use selected selected category to be our category photos categories. Photo categories subscript index selected index path dot section. And then we can get the detail TVC that image which is our var over here and see this var that we just create var image we don't need the comments because we use dummy data to be what ui image with the named of we got the selected category and then inside this category we have different image names and inside this image names array we got the selected index path dot item now I know that those things it is that doesn't make sense just because the design of my model classes are like this inside your app you don't need to use this exact thing but you do need to prepare for the segue you do need to get the detail tail view controller and then you pass into that whatever the data that you want to use right so inside this I use this model classes inside yours project you don't have to use this thing make sense Okay, so now let's go into our detail tail view controller, set up all the things that is required to have those kind of that. Now I know all of the things, um, um, how many minutes, maybe 15 minutes we are into this. We just set up our tail view, set up our UI, set up our view classes. Now here is the main part. So we have the image, we got the comment, Next thing, let's have some private private properties over here. Private. Right. So here, number one, I want to get I want to have um why is that? Let's have our table header private var. And we got to this. Oops, I'm sorry, let's have a let. Private let. We got the table header height. Right? It is a type CG float. And this height is the height of the table header view. Okay, you can call table, table header view height. You know what? Let's call that table header view height to be CG float. And here, let's make this 500 point. Okay, and then you know what? Over here, I want to do a code challenge for you a little bit later on. Okay, code challenge over here is make this height dynamic with the height of the view controller to be around like three fourths of the height okay because maybe the user is using a small screen maybe the user is using a big screen you don't know about that you have to change that very easy just uh, i don't i will not tell you about that it's very easy okay so let's have the private let for the table header view cutaway to be a CG float of say 40 points. Now you see this thing, it is called a cutaway, right? We cut that away. So CG float, okay? And then let's store because we're going to manipulate our head of view, manipulate our head of view in code. So let's store a var header view inside our class. So we got the detail head of view like this, okay? Now, the question is how we can cut this away? How can we cut this away? In order to cut that away, we have to use a C a shape layer. You don't have to know about that. I will show you that. So we have this thing, header mask layer to be a C a 
shape layer like this. Now this shape layer is what we're going to put that layer on top of this thing with this shape. And then we cut that away. We use um, core graphics to, to do that, okay? Okay, inside the collection view, I'm sorry, inside view did a lot, let's set up. We have the title. Um, we may not need the title, so let's just leave it there. Um, you know what, let's have the title. I think I like the title. So var category over here, let's have the title to be a string like this. And then I'll go back into photos collection view. We want to get that string of category. So we have something to show on the navigation bar. So let's get detail tvc dot category to be our, uh, where is that, where, where is selected category dot title. Very simple, right? So now let's get back into detail TV controller. Over here, we got the category. So inside our VDID lot, I want to do title, or you can use navigation item dot title to be our category, like this. Okay. And then I mentioned that for the comments, we want to use dynamic table view height. So let's use table view dot estimated row height to be table view dot row height. And then just a recap, table view dot row height. Okay, maybe you are familiar with this. So maybe you will need some more practice with dynamic table view height. I just want to show you to do this. So UI table view, UI table view automatic dimension, right? Okay, let's implement our table view data source. So here I will have an extension for the detailed table view controller and we want to implement mark UI table view data source like this, right? And then over here, we got the table view number of rows in section. I will return the comments dot count. <laughs> okay. And then we got table view self or row at index path like that. We do need to override. So override like this. So let's get the cell to be table view dot the key reusable cell with identifier, the key reusable cell with identifier and index path. So the identifier here, let's use comment cell. Yeah, we should use a struct for the story bar, but we do only have one cell. So let's use that thing. For the index path like this, we cast it down as a comment table view cell. And then notice, remember that comment table view cell? We got the comment. So we have to set the comment. So cell.comment to be the comment subscript index path dot row. All right? And then we return the cell like this. Now, if you run the app now, if you run the app now, it will crash. It will crash. Uh wait, where's that? Unexpected non-void returned. Non-void. Oh wait. Tail view will display cell. So that's why. So tail view, let me see. Tail view, cell for row, and not will display. Tail view, cell for row at index path. Yeah, and then I will copy paste this thing. Games, okay, wrong method. <laughs> okay, build a project, run it. Now, when you run it right now, it will crash. The reason for that is um, actually, you know what? It will not do anything. It would not do anything because inside our main story bar, okay, so where is our app? Over here. Okay, when we click there, it will crash because we haven't assigned this thing. Detail, okay, it says, cannot cast the value of UI table view controller to photos underscore the trend, which is our project, detail table view controller. Now, why is that? Because we haven't set the custom class for this guy. Right, the custom class is detail table view controller, and also this thing, this thing. So we have this thing, the identifier to be comment cell. Oops, comment cell like this. Then you have to set the identifier for this comment cell, like that. Run it now, and you'll see very interesting thing happen. Okay, so let's see. Boom. Click there and done. Let's see this. Now, right off the back, we already have the header view. Very nice. 
and we have the comment, right? Just like this, you see this? You know what, I'm going to change uh, maybe later. <laughs> okay, so now let's set up our head of view. So we have the comments, all good, all okay, all nice. Let's set up our head of view. How can we set up that head of view? Let's go back into tail view. I'm sorry, let's get back to our view the load over here. And inside this view the load, let's assign, because we want to manage our head of view with code, right? And we will change the frame, we will change all of those stuff. Let's assign the head of view of the tail view to be property captures like this. So we can do head of view uh, property to be the table view dot header, I'm sorry, table head of view. Okay, and we have to cast it down as the detail header view. Remember that detail header view, we assign the custom class to be detail header view. Okay, and then we want to set the header view dot image to be our image. And then we set the header, uh, we don't need the category, that's cool. Okay, let's run the project and see if we do, sh sh uh, if this image do show, does show up. Let's see the image. Okay, select that and we do see the image. See this? Very nice, right? So we can do that. Now, I'm going to clear out this image, this table view. So table view dot table header view to be nil because I want to manipulate, manipulate this header view later on. So let's do table view dot add sub view for our header view like this. Okay, so let's run the project once again and you'll see what happened. Okay, let's see that. Boom, like this. Now, what happens over here? Okay, what happens over here? So what happens is let's let's use our view hierarchy, um, what, what we call debugger over here. So you see this view hierarchy, what I just did is I click this button, right? Don't stop the project. Click this button, it's called debug view hierarchy. And we will see this very interesting thing is when we have all the views exactly like this, right? Exactly like the app that we are running. So when I scroll, when we scroll it like this, and you will see that this is our header view, right? This is detail header view, you see over here, the image view. And below there uh, is our table view. Because we just, because we just, um, how, how, what should I call? We just add the sub view of this thing right on top of the table view, right on top of the table view. That's why it overlaps like that. So what we want to do now is we push the content offset of the table view down a, li a little bit, okay? So that we see the table view, full table view. So that later on, when we scroll it down, we can stretch this view very nicely. So like this, and then over here, let's use tail view that content inset. Okay, we push it down to be UI edge inset with the top left and right. The top is table header view height, right? So we will push it down like that. Okay, let's close this project. And then the left is zero, bottom and right is zero. Run the project again and let's see what happens. Okay, let's see. Run the project and you will see that we push it down like that, right? We see the content inset is pushed down like that. And then let's now do tail view dot content offset. Content offset to be our CG point of X and Y. X is zero. Y we use negative table header height, view height. And then we have to plus a 64 for the navigation bar over here. So let's run the project once again. Over here. Huh, interesting. It's still over there. Let me check again. Oh, okay. So now we have to, let's continue on. We want to cut away the head of view and then we will calculate this content inset and content offset again so that we, it will look nice. So we want to cut away the head of view 
Now the way that we do this is we create the header mask layer to be a CA shape layer like this. And then we do the header mask layer dot fill color fill color to be a UI color dot let's say use black dot CG color, right? And then we use header view like that. Okay, where is our header view? Header view over here. Let's see this. Table header view. Right. So the tail view, the header view, the layer, the mask to be our header mask layer. Like that. And then we want to adjust the content inside of the tail view so that the first cell it is show up and it is a little bit colorway. So let's do let effective height to be tail view header view height minus our table header cutaway over two divided by two like that and then we do tail view dot content inset oops content inset to be our UI edge inset like that with the top left and right the top is effective height left is zero bottom and right like that Okay, the effective height it will push down the cell a little bit, and then let's do table view dot content table view dot content offset cg point of x is zero, white is negative effective height like that. Okay, let's run the project and see how it looks like. Now my guess is it is not complete yet, <laughs> because we still have something to do with this. So. Let's check. Run here, here, and we got this thing. Now we don't see the image. We don't see the image. But let's debug our view hierarchy a little bit. Okay, the image is down here. Now why is that? The image is down here. So let's continue on and let's see what's happened. Okay, and we'll have a method a helper method here because we want to update the frame and all of those things of the header view so for this update header view number one i will recalculate that effective height so let's the effective height to be our header table header view height minus our table header view cut away divided by two okay and then we want to calculate what is the rectangle for that header view. So for header rect to be a CG rect with the X is zero, right? The frame, the frame of that thing. So X is zero, height is effective, negative effective height. The width is table view dot bounds dot width so that it is full width and height is table header view height like this right now over here the interesting thing is when if we want to stretch that tail view right then we have to check whenever the tail view content offset the the y position of that over here okay so the y position of that content offset is less than that effective height right so it means that it's down over here then we will change the width of the i'm sorry we will change the height of the rectangle of the head of you and then we also stick the top of this tail view still stick to the top of the tail view okay what i mean by that is we check if the tail view the content offset that y meaning that we score it down like this right is less than the negative effective height meaning that we score way down this is the effective height, right? This is effective height. When we scroll down below, then it means that this needs to be stretched. The, re the way that we can stretch this thing is we do header, um, header rate dot origin dot y is table view dot content offset dot y. Okay, so that with this thing, it seems like it grows with the offset of the tail view. Okay, and then we do header right dot size dot height 
to be the negative tail view dot content offset dot y and we plus that category so tail view header category over two okay and then let's do the header view dot frame to be the header right like that and don't forget that we have to update the frame when the view first loaded so update header view like this and let's run the project once again and see if it works okay it will not perfect now because we still have one or two things to do so run the project click into one huh we don't see the image because some problem over here so let me check that thing okay the reason why we didn't see the image yet is because we have that layer over here okay so you know what let me unmask this layer and see if it displays out and then we'll see how it looks like okay so this layer because this layer we use that right so we have the mask see this now this image is still there right so let's use one extra line so we have that stretchy so the line is whenever the score view the scroll pay attention that we're using a score view delegate not the tail view or not the collection view anything that's why you can use the same effect with collection view same effect with tail view so when we have an extension for the detail table view controller and when the scroll view did scroll like this when the scroll view did scroll we override right then we will update the head of view so that we can update the frames and all of those stuff for the head of view we can update the frames we can update the size of the height of the of the head of view let's see how it looks like like this see that and when we scroll down boom and we have the amazing stretchy header but now it, this thing is pushed down a little bit okay now it, the reason for that is i use the cutaway so let's put this mask back again over here and then whenever we update the frame let's put the mask so that we have the cutaway so let's have now here i will use a path a ui bezier path like this let's path to be a ui Bezier path like that and then I will draw this thing right number one I will move this path from zero zero right so this is zero zero this point over here this point over here zero zero so path dot move move to point of CG point with X oops X is zero and Y is zero like this and then we will add the line right so if you know if you're familiar with drawing then we move from the origin is zero zero and then we add the line to the rectangle that width so the x here will be move over here right y is still zero so we will draw this thing something like this you see this see the cursor so something like this like that we are drawing this mask like this right okay so the path dot add line to the point of cg point with the x y x is header view header right so let's have the header right dot width and the y is zero okay next let's do add line for the cg point with the x and y x is header right dot width y is header header right dot height like that okay so the first point is this thing we move over here and then we move down here and then last thing is we add the line we move it over here to there right so we move over here to there so we cut away just a little bit so that's the trick so path the add line from cg point x is this y is this x is zero y is header right dot height and because we want to cut away so we do minus the table header view cutaway like this right and finally we add this layer the path of this layer header right header mask layer the path to be the path dot zg path and let's run the project and see what it looks like 
It's like magic, really. Okay. Over here. Let's see. And when we tap into this, boom, we see this beautiful image view and this header is cut away and it stretches. It looks nice. You see that? All right, my friend, that is how you create the stretchy header effect. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and also socialize your apps. 2017 is coming up. That is the program where I teach you how to build five different social network apps like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, Snapchat, and also a retail e-commerce store, Nike. So I hope that you will join me there. I have a video series all free for you coming up next. All you have to do is click the button on this page, enter your name and email there so I can send you three video series over the next few days. And there I teach you how to build Twitter with Firebase, Instagram user interface, the Nike store retail store interface. I hope that you enjoy me. Uh, I mean, you join me <laughs> and get into that series. It's all free for you. All you have to do, click the button on this page, download that, and also, I see you in the next few days. I see you in the next time. Catch you next time on this episode. Also, download that, okay? Go out there every single day of your life. Learn new things, craft your ideas, contribute to the world.